For the following question example, we need to assume that the diodes to be ideal. We're going to find values of our current and V input in the circuit figure 4.6. Now, when we look at this, we're going to use the notes that are linked in the description below the like button. And looking at this, we are going to use the steps that we have right here to solve for this. The first step is to assume the diodes are either on or off. Next, we're going to analyze our circuit and then check our assumptions. If we check our assumptions and they are true, then that means we have done the problem correctly. So looking back up at our ideal diode model, we can look at these circuits. So for part A, we are going to assume that they are both on. So if they're both on, we see that we have our D1 here. We have some current I flowing through it. Now, this D1, if they're both on, we are going to assume a few things. First, we can see that there are zero volts going into this. So we have zero volts here, and this is because it's connected to ground. The next thing we're looking at is this D1. And if our diodes are on, which we assumed right here, they're both on, that means it is a short circuit. And that means the voltage across them is zero. So there's gonna be zero volts here, and there's gonna be zero volts across this diode. And since there's zero volts across both of these, and we'll just underline these in red, that means that there's going to be zero volts at this node. Because we have zero volts here, there's no voltage going into it. We have zero volts across this, that means this is zero volts. Now, we have this negative 10 volts right here, and this five kilo ohms here. And what we're gonna to want to do is we want to find the current across it. So using Ohm's law, we can see that our current here is equal to the negative 10 volts over our five kilo ohms, that gives us two millivolts. And the negative is just direction for our current, so we don't need to worry about that now. Um, what we're gonna do next is look at this part. And for this part, we are going to use these two with Ohm's law. We see that our current here is gonna be equal to one, and I just realized I labeled both of these wrong. Uh, it should not be one millivolt, it should actually be one milliamp because that's the unit for our I for current. Now, if we continue to look down, we have this D2, right? And there's zero volts across it. And since there's zero volts across it, well, this voltage is in parallel. And since it's in parallel, and we know voltages in parallel are the same, this voltage here is gonna be equal to zero volts. So now we have solved for our V inputs, right? We have our V right here, that's zero volts. Now let's look for our I. Our I is right here. We found the ID2 right here. This is one milliamp. And we know that this one milliamp is gonna flow through here like this. Um, and we're going to have the current, since it's greater than zero, it's gonna be like figure D, where our current flows through the voltage, the diode, V is equal to zero, which is what we have at D2. So the current is greater than zero. Now, if we look at D1 right here, it's gonna be the same thing. We know that there's zero volts across this. Since the voltage is zero, our I has to be greater than zero. Well, if we, again, look at this, we see that the current is gonna flow through here. It's gonna go through this way. It's gonna hit this node, right? And at this node, we're at one milliamp. Now, from this node going down here, we know right here, we're at two milliamps, right? And so if we have one milliamp here and two milliamps here, and we have a node right here, that means the other current flowing into this, because look, we have this up here, this current must also be one milliamp, because one milliamp and our one milliamp here are going to be this one milliamp. And it's actually good, we should, include this negative that was out front. So we do have a negative two milliamps. And this is because we are going to be using node voltage method. And the node voltage method is saying, well, we have some node and this some node is at B. And if we have some node at B, all of the currents flowing in and out of it, the sum of all the currents that deal with this node are going to be equal to zero. So what we have here is one milliamp plus one milliamp. And then we also have this negative two milliamps. So we have a plus negative two milliamps. And this should equal to zero. And this again 
is from the node voltage method and we can find this in like the engineering 17 notes that we've done previously um, and then the engineering 17 notes throwing it up here we have our node voltage method and the node voltage method if we can find an example we see that we have voltage over resistance and this equals to zero and that is how we would find current so using this and the knowledge that we have you can see that this all makes sense this all um, creates a coherent solution and so that is going to be our answer remember when we started this we consider that they were both on and that is important because that is how we would find this now if this didn't hold to be true if we had some kind of error here which we'll see in this next problem which is in the playlist link below the like button next video in our electronics one study we are going to see that we do have a problem and we will see how we can solve it